Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome to the RC Retro channel. In this episode, we're going to be doing a little custom airbrush painting because, well, if I'm being totally honest, I'm tired of looking at my air compressor that I spent a lot of money on sitting across the room from me collecting dust and because this body's been beat to crap. And we just finished up our second season of on-road racing and, well, I'm going to start preparing for the spring of 2024 starting with my three racing Sakura S64 over here. Phil painted this up for me, and well, I got two seasons out of it, but it's pretty much cracked and hanging on for dear life. So I went ahead and bought a, another Protoform P63 body that you see over here. I already went ahead and with Lexan scissors trimmed it out. I left the wheel wells on because I need that so this way when I stencil out the design, I can ensure that I'm following the right pattern. And I also washed it out already. Now the next thing I need to do is get it mounted onto the chassis. And to help me with that, I have these protoform magnets. Now these are pretty neat because this magnet goes over the body post. And then from there, there's another magnet that goes on the outside. And these little guys are so strong. And this really helps you when positioning the body on the chassis and let you line up everything nicely and keep it in place so that you could ream your holes. So I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll be right back. So to start with the masking process, we are gonna put the window masks on first and then start masking up for our actual paint design. Now, a number of people like to use liquid mask when designing their paint scheme. This is very easy to apply. I personally like to use Bitty Design. You could brush it on, let it sit in between coats to dry. You could spray it on, same thing. And you could even use a heat gun to speed up the whole process. So this way you could spray it on, heat it up, dry it, and then get another coat on. I like to put on two to three coats. And this really allows you to get a very detailed, intricate paint scheme. Uh, you see a lot of people will then take a Sharpie marker on the outside of their body and draw in whatever design it is, and then take a razor blade and cut it out and then spray. I am not very artistic and therefore um, have kind of kept it more so to large areas like you see on my Tide body over here for my Euro truck. I used my airbrush on here and I did liquid mask this and you know, cut out the sections that I wanted to spray. Something maybe a little bit more detailed that I did was right over here with my Kyosho Beetle. Uh, but again, that is more or less straight or curved lines and sections that I just uh, sprayed in thereafter. Nothing intricate with fine details or even fades, but we are going to attempt a fade uh, for this paint scheme. This is my first, so just bear with me. Okay, and then another way to mask off your body is with some, let's say, Tamiya tape of all various sizes, but this is very tedious and very time consuming. But for this paint scheme, we're actually gonna use neither. I'm actually gonna use a vinyl pre-cut paint mask, and we're gonna go with a slime paint scheme. And these vinyl sticker sheets are from Triple X Main, that's XXX Main. I'll post the link in the description down below. Um, these are, I want to say, easy to use because they're pre-cut. You use some transfer tape, which is right over here, and it lifts the vinyl sheet off of this piece of paper over here, and then you basically put it right underneath the body and kind of, you know, rub it on transfer it on there and then you pull it off. I know I'm making it sound a lot easier than it is right now, but we're gonna get that on. So I'm gonna go and put the window mask on and then uh, take a couple of pictures of the process of pulling this um, paint drip splatter mark, <laughs> you know, vinyl sheet and put that onto here. We're gonna go for a very, very simple paint scheme on this one. It's gonna be a solid color with the slime on here, maybe a couple splatter drips on the side because they do give you a couple of those. But this company has a wide variety of different vinyl stencils that you can use from different size flames, drip marks, tribal, 
So you can go check out their website. I've used them once before on my Nissan King Cab, uh, but that was with paint cans, believe it or not, and it came out pretty good. So these really make your life a lot easy if you are not very artistic and you wanna go with some kind of design. So I recommend these. So let's get this on and see what it looks like. Okay, so the paint masks are on. Didn't go on as smooth as I thought, but I got them on. Right away, you're gonna notice this big air bubble over here. Not a big deal, because it's right in the middle of this big splatter mark on the roof. But yeah, um, it's on. Uh, took a little finagling, but it's there. There are some bubbles underneath there, so right before I paint, I'm gonna have to use my finger and make sure I go over everything one last time. Uh, the splatter marks, I just kind of placed you know, throughout the back end of the body. Put a little box around here because that's where I wanted to make sure I got it. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look pretty cool. And I even did their wing with some splatter marks on there too. So what colors are, so what colors is this going to be? Well, we are going to use a little pearl blue. <laughs> Had to do a little shaking right there. We're gonna make sure that this is all pearl blue. And then the slime is going to be a fluorescent yellow into the fluorescent green. And before we even get painting, we have to finish masking off this whole area. So I'm gonna use some Tamiya tape. I just tape this off over here because we're gonna paint all of this blue first, back that with some white, and then we're gonna pull the masks off, and then we'll do some neon green into some neon yellow. Same thing here. Neon green into some yellow down here. So, all right, let's get on with this. We are on coat number four. I'm sorry if my voice is not coming in so crystal clear. I have my mask on. But yeah, coat number four should do it. And then we could back it in some white and make this nice blue pop. But so far, I think it looks pretty good. I could already see some paint runs in there, whether it's the window mask or the slime, but I think we'll be able to go in there no problem and clean it up. This whole area right over here. I don't think the uh, sticker was sticking. Well, I apologize for that also. That's my brother-in-law cutting tile for my bathroom because we're doing some renovations in the house. <laughs> All right. Not the best quality video right now, but we're getting it done. And that's the pearl blue done. Came out really nice. Uh, about four to five coats of the pearl blue backed in white. Some people will say I should have done it in silver. I've done plenty of blues, whether it's Tamiya paint or Proline paint. Blue backed in white, black and silver. Either which way, it looks nice. Uh, you really can't get a sense of how this blue pops right now because of the protective coating on here. But I also went ahead and pulled off the paint mask, the slime paint mask. Um, pretty much the splatter ones were fine. There were no runs or um, anything like that. But the ones in the front, because there are so many, I did have a number of runs or even spray getting underneath the paint mask. So it got very cloudy in one particular area over here. You can't even see it now because fortunately, Proline paint isn't the greatest. I know you want your paint to be the greatest, but Proline paint kind of just goes on and even when it dries, you could just take your nail and, and scrape it off. That's how easy it comes off. So fortunately, I was able just to take some cotton swabs or Q-tips just with a little water and just 
clean up the areas and get all the overspray off that was in the front over here. Not so great news is um, because there was so much overspray, I really, in a number of different splatter areas or drip areas, I couldn't get that nice crisp line. So if you kind of look closely, there are a lot of the slime or future slime areas that are nice and crisp lines. And then there are some that are a little hazy or a little jagged because you know you can only get so close with a with a Q-tip to clean it up. But I consider this like a Monet, right? It's gonna look good from afar. And if you get really close and inspect it, um, you'll probably notice that, but not really a big deal because once we get the slime on and you throw some stickers, it's all about misdirection. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. And plus this is gonna be a beater body, so uh, it doesn't have to be a professional work of art. So <sighs> next we're gonna get the slime going and we're gonna go with some fluorescent green first um, and then it's going to fade into the yellow so my logic is to start outlining everything in the green and to build it up and then eventually go into the yellow and then back in white fluorescents are kind of not overly complicated you don't have to go too heavy with fluorescence um, because it's really when you back it in white that makes it pop so that'll be great and the same thing for the splatter marks i'm just going to go kind of like circular around with the green and then work my way into the yellow in the middle for all the splatter marks. And then we'll get the uh, window mass off and do some window trim on here. And I think this will turn out rather nice, especially for my f real first complicated <laughs> body work as far as spraying. So, all right, let's get started with that. So I went and hit it with three coats and I try to keep it in a V pattern just like the slime goes. I think maybe I went a little too pointy over here but whatever. Hopefully it'll blend nice with the yellow but listen it's my first time really doing something like this so I'll learn from my mistakes. But uh, yeah that's a neon green and then for, oops, for the uh, slime splats. Just kind of went around in a circular motion. Now I'm gonna go back in, hit it with the yellow, the fluorescent yellow, do the brass and then back it in white. Yellow's done. Let's just point out the obvious defect. Remember that V pattern that I had going on right over here? Well, it just wasn't sitting with me. I was looking at it. It was bothering me more and more. And so I just went back in with a paper towel and some water and started to clean it up. And then I went in with, to me, a polycarbonate cleaner to clean up this whole area. And now I have this, I don't know, this indent right over here. But that's not a big deal because the sticker grill goes right here. And then I'm going to find the perfect sticker to put right
right on top of the grill centered going across here because that's what stickers do. They hide imperfections. But other than that, the fade from the neon yellow, or should I say fluorescent yellow to the fluorescent green looks pretty good throughout. Um, of course, you know, over here is the wheel well, but once you back this with white, it's really gonna pop, or at least I hope it'll pop a little bit more. But I am actually pretty impressed with the splatter marks. It's really hard to see, but you could see the green and then the yellow and the green on the outside and the yellow here. And once I get some white on this, hopefully it'll show up better. And then once you pull off the protective film, um, we'll be able to see what it really looks like. Check that out. Look at how that fluorescent just pops when it's backed in white. You can now definitely see the difference between the yellow and the green for the splatter marks and in the slime in the front. Um, yeah, don't pay any attention to that. That's going to be covered up with a sticker. <laughs> but for the complexity of this paint scheme, for the first time I'm doing something like this, I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. Love the pearl blue and the fluorescents. And now, even though I backed it in white, I'm going to take Tamiya PS White and back the whole thing in white and give it a nice even coat because this Proline paint scratches off with your fingernail. So I want to get something a little bit more durable to back it and coat it. And then we'll take the window masks off and we'll redo the window mask to have frames going around and we'll spray those. All right, so I skipped ahead and finished off the whole touring car body. I ended up going with silver for the window trim because I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Do the window trim in silver, it matches the blue nicely, but also back the entire car in silver with Tamiya PS paint to better protect it because the Proline paint typically scratches off rather easily. I think I made a right choice with the silver. It looks really good with the blue. For the spoiler or the wing in the rear, I went with black and I continued the slime. I changed the pattern a little bit from what you saw at the beginning with the mass on there to this. I actually think my fade came out a little bit better with the slime in the rear over here. So that's pretty cool. But all in all, I'm really happy with how this came out. I didn't go crazy with stickers. I kept it very minimalist, just putting on the basic stickers, just a little bit on the side over here. The lights in the grill in the front, just protoform in the rear. Um, I found the perfect sticker. <laughs> it is a protoform P63 body, and I cut the P63 out right in the front, almost like an emblem, stuck it right in that paint imperfection, and you can't even tell that it's there, and it just blends all nicely. I was thinking about asking my buddy Fix It Phil to maybe make something custom. But then I was like, ah, you know what? This will work nicely right over here. Besides, once I get it out on the Fender Bender Speedway, I'm sure I'm gonna rear end somebody or flip this over or scratch it, so no biggie. But all in all, I really love the way that the uh, neon on here, fluorescent, you know, has that illusion that it's glowing. Love the yellow into the green with the blue. Uh, put some nice new clean wheels on here. So this is all ready for the spring when we start our on-road racing season. So yeah, this is awesome, awesome, awesome. Now over here, I put some other bodies that I um, did airbrushing to or with. And uh, you know, like I said, just basic, you know, masking off patterns with no fades or anything. My Beetle, um, which is the first body I airbrushed when I got all my airbrush equipment. And uh, if you're wondering what I use, I use a Pash air compressor, an Iowata Eclipse spray gun, uh, Proline paints. But one of the most important things that I definitely recommend, even though this is water-based paint and you can spray it inside, is definitely getting yourself a uh, respirator because if you don't have a proper ventilation system, even though this is water-based paint, um, look, 
that's what the filters are grabbing with the blue where you know I'm spraying and how close it is to my face and regardless I definitely don't want to be inhaling that so you definitely want to get yourself a respirator um, but any other paints before you start spraying inside I would definitely check uh, to make sure that you could spray inside or if they're not water-based you definitely want to have proper ventilation whether it's a fan sucking stuff out or just outside maybe in a garage or in a shed but for me I could do that inside with the Proline paint because it's water-based but uh, like a Tamiya spray can, I, I would definitely be outside in my garage or outside. So, um, also just again like Corvette ZR1 body, uh, very nice over here in a pearl orange. Again, just masking off certain areas and, and big areas and just painting. So nothing too fancy. The Tide body over here for my Euro truck. Again, same thing, just masking off in areas. This is actually a triple X main. Um, mask that you see on here or I used a mask from triple X main and did it with a spray can so you could even use spray cans so here's an example is my uh, Tamiya Nissan King Cab runner so but nothing to this extent my first um, I want to say more along the lines of extensive airbrush paint job right over here and I'm really really happy now we got to take it out and scratch it up <laughs> all right so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're thinking about airbrushing um, you know, just buy the right equipment. You got to have the right tools for the job and, um, you know, take your time and practice and it'll all come together. And it's definitely um, challenging, but not as hard as everyone thinks it is. And it's definitely doable. So, um, but then again, it's also expensive to buy the proper equipment, right? So just take that into consideration. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for your support. I'll see you all in my next and hopefully there'll be more airbrushing videos on the channel, all right? Take care now. Let's go, let's go.